so let's talk about square roots. Um, no, because Jess still has to take it, but I can maybe show you grades. Okay, so let's say we have x is equal to the root of k. Now some vocabulary we need to know. This radical is called a radical. It is called a square root. And sometimes it's just called a root. The number inside the radical is called the radicand. And for the purpose of everything you've done up until this point, there hasn't been a need to have a number here. But there is a number there. Sort of like you know how when you have an X there, even though there's not a 1 written in front of the X, you know there is a 1 there, right? So there's the same idea here. When you have a radical and there's no number there, it's implied that it's a 2. So when there's no number there, it's implied that it's a 2. And this number is called the index. And what does this index represent? This index represents how many times something has to be multiplied by itself to give you the radicand. So it's saying how many times does a number need to multiply by itself to give you k? Um, let's say the index was 3. It's how many times that number needs to be multiplied by itself three times to give you k, whatever the number is under that radicand. That's what the index tells you. And when there's no index written, it's implied that it's a 2. When there's no index written, it's implied that it's a 2. So now let's talk about simplifying radicals. So the way this reads is 3 root 72, but really what's happening is this is saying 3 times the root of 72. This is really 3 times the root of 72. And when we want to simplify, eventually I'm going to want you to simplify in your head. I'm going to want you to be able to simplify so quickly. Um, but really the process you should be taking in your head is you should be asking yourself, what is the biggest perfect square that goes into 72? So what is the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 72? You got it. So we want 36 and 2. And because the index here, even though it's not written, because the index there is a 2, what you're looking for is pairs. You want two of the same. That's what that index, index tells us. We want two of the same. So right now, when I break down 72 into 36 and 2, there's no pairs there. But then I could break 36 down into 6 and 6. That's a pair. So when we're simplifying, we don't want primes. We want pairs. We don't want primes. We want pairs. So even though we're sort of making a factor tree, you stop at pairs. You don't stop at primes. So now what you do is whatever you circle gets pulled out one time. What does that mean? I circled one pair of six, so that means one six is going to the outside. But what's already on the outside? A three. So what's going to happen is it's going to be three times six. And whatever's not circled all or crossed out, that goes back underneath the radical. So what number is going back underneath the radical? A 2. So this becomes 18 root 2. All right, let's say you took the longer way there. Let's say you didn't choose 72 
uh, you didn't choose 36 and 2. Let's say you chose 8 and 9 you're going to be doing more work now. It's still going to get you the same answer, but you're going to be doing more work. So 8, do we all agree that 8 is 4 and 2? And 9 is 3 and 3? So there's a pair of 3s. But I'm not done. Why am I not done? If I break down more, will I get more pairs? Yes, I can break down the 4 into 2 and 2. Now, we only want twins. We don't want triplets. So I'm not going to group that third two in there. You only want two in a group, never three in a group. Now, everything you circled is going to get put on the outside one time. So I circled one pair of twos, so one two is going on the outside. I circled one pair of threes, so one three is going on the outside. And what is left on the inside? A two. So 3 times 2 is 6, times 3 is 18 root 2. We got the same answer both ways. All right, you guys try this one. Now remember, I'm going to eventually want you to be able to simplify in your head. So if you can do it in your head, you don't need to show me work. Okay, so 24, I'm thinking 4 and 6. Now, I could break that 4 down into 2 and 2. There's a pair. Why is it not worth breaking the 6 down? Why is it not worth it to break the 6 down? Philip? Yeah, we're not going to get another pair. We'll get 2 and 3. That's not creating another pair. So 1, 2 is going on the outside to make it 10 on the outside, and a 6 is left on the inside. All right, now let's introduce some variables. So we're going to say all variables will be greater than or equal to 0, meaning we're only dealing with positive numbers. Because we know if we have a negative under a radical, that gives us an imaginary number, which we're not dealing with. Okay, so now let's talk, same idea, if I have the square root of x squared, our index, even though there's nothing there, is implied that it's a 2. So we're looking for pairs. Do we all agree that x squared is x times x? Well, that's a pair. So you're going to pull 1 on the outside. Is there anything left on the inside? No, which makes sense. The square root of x squared is x. And now I'm going to have the square root of x to the fifth. So that's five x's. One, two, three, four, five. And you are now looking for pairs. You have one pair of x's, another pair of x's. Everything you circle goes on the outside one time. So I circled one pair of x's, so there's one x on the outside. But didn't I then circle another pair of x's? So that's another x on the outside. What's left on the inside? Just one x. x times x is x squared. All right, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to see if you see a shortcut here. 
So we're going to have the square root of x to the 11th. Does anybody think they see a shortcut? Philip, don't tell me the shortcut. If you think you see the shortcut, what would be the answer? Um, x, to the fifth, x. x to the fifth root x. You got it. X to the fifth root x. All right. Who thinks they see a shortcut? If you think you see a shortcut, what would be the square root of x to the 20th? If you think you see a, uh, a shortcut, what would be the square root of x to the 20th? Layla. X to the 10th. You got it. X to the 10th. If you think you see a shortcut here, what would be the square root of x to um, x to the 21st? Or no, let's change it. Let's do x to the... Keep it simple still. X to the fifth, uh, x to the thirtieth. What would it be, Michael? X to the fifteenth. If you think you see a shortcut, what would be the root of x to um, the thirteenth? If you think you see a shortcut, what would be the square root of x to the thirteenth? So yeah. X to the sixth root x. What is the shortcut? Good. You're dividing that exponent by 2. And the remainder is what, however many x's you have left on the inside, right? 13 divided by 2 is 6 remainder 1, right? So that means we're going to have 6 x's on the outside, remainder 1, 1 x left on the inside. That is the shortcut. All right, now let's add numbers and variables together. So now we have the root of 24x to the third. Well, I know the root of x to the third is going to be x root x. Do we agree with that? Can we do 24 in our head? I hope so. So in my head, I'm thinking 24 biggest, um, biggest perfect square that goes into 24 is 4. So 4 and 6 and 4 becomes 2 and 2. So this is going to be 2x root 6x. How many people would have been able to do that in their heads? Good. That's what I want to see. All right. What about this one? 3x root 75x to the fifth. You all do that one. Okay, who has simplified this? That's it. Philip, what'd you get? 15x cubed root 3x. Perfect. Anybody need to see me do it? Okay, let's say I have 7ab root 24 a to the 10th, B to the 7th. So I'm going to work with my variables first. And uh, the square root of A to the 10th is A to the 5th. But don't I already have an A on the outside? So that's going to become a to the sixth. And now b to the seventh will become, well, seven divided by two. Well, two goes into seven, let's put it that way. Two goes into seven three times, right? So three b's are getting taken out, but there's already a b on the outside, which makes it 
four bees on the outside and they will there will be one bee left on the inside are there any a's left on the inside no and then we have 24 well we know 24 we've done this a bunch of times already we're gonna break 24 down into four and six the six stays on the inside the four is coming to the outside but what is that four going to multiply with the seven to make a 28 what happened Oh, not a four. Sorry, a two. The two's coming out, which will make it 14. Sorry. All right, let's step it up just a little bit. Do not get intimidated that I put a variable into the exponent. Do not get intimidated by that. Okay, I'll do it the long way and I'll do it the short way. X to the 4M, isn't this just X to the M times X to the M times X to the M times X to the M, right? That's X to the 4M. So we have a pair and another pair. Everything gets taken to the outside one time. So x to the m times x to the m. What's x to the m times x to the m? x to the 2m. All right, shortcut. What does the shortcut tell us? Take the exponent, divide it by 2. 4m divided by 2 is 2m, which means it's x to the 2m, no remainder. So there's nothing left on the inside. Okay, big thing we have to realize here. So right now, this is x raised to the 4m. Wait, uh, Sorry. This is x to the 4m plus 2. This plus 2 is in your exponent. Is it down inside the radical? No, it is in your exponent. Okay, what does that mean? Because it's in your exponent, it's not really addition. It is the same as x to the 4m, not plus x squared, what is it, times x to the second. Do we agree that's the same thing? Okay. You're absolutely, if there's multiplication between, you're absolutely allowed to consider these sort of separate. If it's a plus sign in between, can you consider them separate? No. If it's a plus sign between, you cannot consider them separate. If it's multiplication, you absolutely can consider them separate. Philip, give me one minute. So this ends up becoming x to the 2m times x to the first. Anything left inside? No. But then we can multiply these. x to the 2m times x to the first is x to the 2m plus 1. Could you have just originally taken that exponent and divided by 2? So what were you going to? Yes, we absolutely could have done that. Yeah, you'd get a point off for not simplifying completely. All right, I want you guys to try these next two. I want you to try these two on your own.
Okay, someone tell me what you get for number 12. Kai? Root X. How many people got that? Anybody want to see me do it? Okay, so the way I did this was I split this into X to the 6M times X to the 5th. And then I just sort of used my shortcut. So I took 6M, I divided it by 2, it went in evenly, so we got X to the 3M on the outside. Then I took X to the 5th, and I used my shortcut again, so I took 5 and I divided it by 2, so 2 goes into 5 2 times with one left over. So that means there's going to be one X left over. But now on the outside, this is multiplication. And the rule for multiplying variables is keep your base and add your exponents. All right, who got an answer for number 13? Philip? I got x to the 4x, y to the 4, sorry, uh, x to the 4a, y to the 4a plus 1, uh, times the square root of x to the a, y to the 2. y to the 4a plus 1. Yes. And then what did you get? Uh, times the square root of x to the a, y to the Do you see it, Philip? <laughs> it's okay. Just, just. Also, be three a plus one plus b. There you go. Three a plus one plus b, and those three a one and b can be in any order. It could be in any order. Who needs to see me do it? No. Okay. Next one. Who's going to tell me what the biggest mistake on a problem like this is? Does anybody know? What is the biggest mistake on a problem like this? Philip? Um, splitting the coefficients into the square roots. Exactly. Splitting this into like 16w cubed plus 48w squared plus 36w. That is the biggest mistake, sort of treating each one of these as a radical by itself. I cannot do that. If it were multiplication between each of these, if it were multiplication instead of addition signs, then we could absolutely treat them separately. The minute there's plus signs, we can no longer treat it separately. So I can't just say, okay, well, this is going to be 4w with 1w left over. Can't do that. Can't do that. So we have to sort of think outside the box now. What can I do underneath this radical? Danny? Could you like pull out uh, a GCF and then a factor? That's exactly what you want to do. We want to pull out a GCF. So we're going to pull out a GCF of 4W. And when we pull out a GCF of 4W, we are going to end up with 4W squared plus 12W plus 9. Now, between multiplication, can I treat them separately? Absolutely. When it's multiplication between it, I could sort of look at it as the square root of 4w times the square root of this whole thing. But I am going to factor. I am going to factor the 4w squared plus 12w plus 9. And this ends up becoming... Ooh, 4w times the quantity of 2w plus 3 squared.
So I'm going to first work with the 4W. And I can have a pair of twos there. So then we're left with still a W on the inside. Do we agree with that? But then, don't I have two of these? The quantity of 2w plus 3 and then another quantity of 2w plus 3 isn't that a pair so what does that tell us that's a pair what am i going to do take one out 2w plus 3 nothing left on the inside we distribute this in you are going to get 4w plus 3. You have to keep it in the parentheses. Oh, sorry. Plus 6. Thank you. You have to root w. You have to keep it in the parentheses. Because if you don't keep it in the parentheses, this is saying 4w plus 6 root w. Do you see the difference? This is saying only the 6 gets the root w. When this is saying this whole quantity gets the root W, do you see the difference between these? This is not right. Don't want that. We need the parentheses. Yes. On the test, would you be forced to distribute uh, like the two, for example? Will, I be, will you be forced? Yeah. I feel like that's a very extreme word. I mean, will I get forced off if I don't? Does that make sense? Um... So, like, if you just wrote it like this. I mean, I'd probably give it to you. Yeah. But I prefer you distribute it. Okay, let's keep going. So now let's talk about adding and subtracting radicals. Adding and subtracting radicals, do this. Is very similar to adding and subtracting variables. What's the rule for adding and subtracting variables? If they're like terms, you can add them. If they're not like terms, you cannot add them, right? It's the same idea with radicals. If it's the same radican, you can add them. If it's different radicands, you cannot add them. Don't write this down, but if I have 3x squared plus 4x squared, they're considered like terms. Why? Because they have the same variable and the same exponent, right? But when you add them, do you add the exponents or do you only add the coefficients? When you're adding these, do you add the exponents or do you only add the coefficients? The fact that nobody wants to answer that scares me, Danny. You only add the coefficients. This becomes 7x to the second. It's the same idea with the radicals. If I have 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2, do we agree they have the same radicand? Yeah, so when you add, you only add the coefficients. So this is going to be 7 root 2. Okay, so you guys can write this one down. So we have 4 root 18 minus root 8 plus root 2. Right now, none of these radicands are the same, but that doesn't mean I can't add them. Why does this, uh, why am I saying it doesn't mean I can't add them? I just can't add them yet. Tori? Yeah, because if you can simplify a radical, you have to simplify a radical. Sort of like if you can simplify a fraction, you have to simplify the fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify each radical. Can somebody in their head simplify 4 root 18 for me? Tell me, what do you get? 
uh, Tejas? You got it, 12 root 2. What about root 8 in your head? Can somebody simplify that for me? Yeah. Michael, 2 root 2. And do we all agree this is like a 1 root 2? Even though there's no number there, there's really a 1 there? Okay, so now they all have the same radicand. I can now add them. 12 root 2 minus 2 root 2 is a 10 root 2. 10 root 2 plus 1 root 2 is 11 root 2. Okay, so now first thing I'm going to do is simplify this. So I have a 20. I know 20 is 5 and 4. So that 4 gets broken down into two twos, so I'm going to pull a 2 out. So we're going to have 4 and a 5 left over inside, right, because it was 4 and 5. And then I have x to the third. 2 goes into 3 one time, so I'm going to pull out 1x, but there's already 2x's on the outside, which means I'm now going to have 3x's on the outside and 1x left over. Can I pull anything out from the Y? No. So that Y stays inside. All right, now we're going on to 45. For 45, I'm going to go with 9 and 5. So in my head, 45, I'm going with 9 and 5. So that means there's a 3 coming out, a 5 staying in. X to the third. Again, I'm going to use my shortcut. 2 goes into 3 one time, but I already have 2 x's on the outside. I'm going to bring one more out to make 3 x's on the outside. And 1 x left over on the inside. And then for the last one, is there anything to simplify for the last one? No. It's just x cubed root 5xy. So out of all three of these, what are the only two that I can add? The first and the last. So we have 4x cubed minus x cubed minus 1x cubed, which brings us to 3x cubed root 5xy minus 3x cubed root 5x. There is nothing else we can do here. There is nothing else we can do here. Philip? So you're saying if you wanted to pull out a 3x cubed, so then you'd be left with root 5xy minus root 5x. I would take it if you wrote it like that. Okay, you guys try this one on your own.
Okay, let's do this one. Who has an answer? Layla? To be Ruby. To be Ruby. Anybody need me to do it? We're good? Good, because it's perfect. All right, let's go on now. The last part of today's lesson, uh, we're going to multiply radicals. Now for adding radicals, you need to have the same radicand. To multiply radicals, you do not need the same radicand. So when you're multiplying radicals, you, can, you multiply the outside numbers, you multiply the coefficients, and you multiply the radicands. So I'm going to have negative 7 times 5 is a negative 35. And then we're going to multiply 30 and 2. But I'm not actually going to multiply 30 and 2. I could do it like this, 30 and 2. So that way, when you break it down, if you want to, you could do 15 times 2. And then isn't that a pair? So then we're going to take a 2 out, which will be a negative 70 root 15. How come I didn't bother to break the 15 down? Philip? Yeah, because we won't get any pairs from it. We won't get any pairs from it. So that's why I didn't even bother to break it down. Okay, you guys try this one. If you wanted to, could you simplify each of these first, then multiply? Yeah, you absolutely could. If you wanted to, you can simplify each of these first, then multiply, or multiply, then simplify. It really doesn't matter. It's really just whatever you prefer. Okay, let's do this together now. So I probably, because the numbers weren't too big, um, I probably would have just multiplied first. So 6 times 8 is a 48. A to the 3rd times A to the 5th is A to the 8th. B to the 8th times B to the 3rd is B to the 11th. And now when I'm simplifying 48, I'm thinking 16 and 3. So that means I'm pulling a 4 out and I'm left with a 3 inside. 8 is even, so 2 will go into 8 evenly, so we're going to have 8 of the 4th on the outside. And when I take 11 and I divide it by 2, 2 will go into 11 5 times with 1 left over. So I'm going to end up with 4 a to the 4th, b to the 5th, root 3b. How many people got that? Good. Okay, now this next concept is very, very important, especially for tomorrow's lesson. When you multiply a radical times itself, and you guys should remember this from geometry, what happens when you multiply a radical times itself? So root 9 times root 9 is root 81, but what's the square root of 81? 
9, whole number 9, right? What about if I multiplied root 6 times root 6? Whole number 6. Excellent. What if I have root um, 101 times root 101? 101. What happens when you multiply a radical by itself? You end up getting the radicand as a whole number, right? You end up getting the radicand as a whole number. The radicals cancel each other out. Same idea if I have root 5 squared. What's root 5 squared? Whole number 5. Right. This concept of when you multiply a radical times itself, it just ends up being the radicand, no more radical, is very important for tomorrow's lesson. All right. What happens if I have something like 2 root D? Squared. Philip? Close. Um, Philip? 4D. Oh, wait. 4D. 4D. You got it. I knew where you were thinking. All right. This is a 4D because this is going to be 2 root D times another 2 root D. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. Root D times root D is whole number, no more radical D. Okay. What about this? 5 root CD squared. Michael? 25 CD, you got it. All right, let's do this. 3 root 5 plus root 2, that whole quantity times the quantity of 4 root 5 minus 6 root 2. We're going to have to double distribute, FOIL, whatever it is that you like to call it. 3 root 5 times 4 root 5. Do we agree that's 12 times 5? 3 root 5 times 4 root 5 is 12 times 5. And then we have 3 root 5 times a negative 6 root 2. That's going to be negative 18 root... 10. We still have the radical there. Now we have root 2 times 4 root 5 is going to be 4 root 10. And then root 2 times a negative 6 root 2 is a negative 6 times 2. Did I lose anybody here? Everybody understand where I got every one of these? Great. So now 12 times 5 is 60. I can add these two together. Negative 18 root 10 plus 4 root 10 is a negative 4 root 10. Negative 6 times 2 is a negative 12. So now I can add these two. 60 minus 12 is 48 minus 4 root 10. Can I simplify root 10? No. no. Philip, why do you look confused? Wait, I have to, when, you, when you added the negative 18 root 10 plus the 4 root 10... Oh, it should be a negative 14. Okay. That's why you look confused. Yeah. Kai. Oh, wait, never mind. I didn't Danny. Yeah, I know. We'll do one more and then I'll give you your test, okay? Last one. Hi. Can I distribute in that exponent of 2? How many people say yes? Let's just distribute in that exponent of 2. How many people say no? Why not? Why can't I distribute it in? Kai? 
Good, it's a binomial, so what do I have to do? I need to multiply it out. So now we multiply. 2 root y plus 2 times 2 root y plus 2. We're going to multiply the outside numbers, that's 4. What's root y plus 2 times another root y plus 2? Good, the whole quantity of y plus 2. Do I need parentheses? Yes, I can't tell you how many of you were not putting parentheses when you needed to on that first page of the quiz. All right, then we're going to have 2 root y plus 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6 root y plus 2. Now we have negative 3 times 2 root y plus 2 is a negative 6 root y plus 2. And then negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. So now I'm going to distribute in that 4. So we're 4y plus 8. minus 12 root y plus 2 plus 9. Again, the 8 and the 9 are like terms. So then we're going to have 4y minus 12 root y plus 2 plus 17. Does the order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. Okay, guys, we are done.